let's explore the ancient Roman city of Jerash in Jordan. Although only about 10% excavated, it is one of the most amazing sites you can see. The golden age for Jerash was during the Emperor Trajan 98 to 117 AD. From the trade routes of Syria, in Bosra in Syria, down to Aqaba, when Trajan created Viva Nova Trajana, the new road of Trajan. The Roman Emperor Hadrian stayed in Jerash in the winter of 129. And this is why we have the Triumphal Arch here at Jerash. Under the seating of the Hippodrome, there are these little shops. The second century Hippodrome, is very little of it left, but it has been quite reasonably reconstructed. And that is where you can see before when we had a look at those shops down below. But the seating would have had about 10,000 to 15,000 um, spectators as the chariots would have run around this centre section. And each lap it would be counted by something like a a seahorse or a dolphin that would be tipped over to know how many laps around the Hippodrome the chariots had run. You arrive at the south gate, which is part of the 3.4 kilometre walls that, city walls that go around Jerash City. When you go through, you will see little groups of shops and over to your left will be the Temple of Zeus. As you enter the south gate, you have the east souk, little shops, and then on this side you have the West Souk, a little smaller group of shops, and next to the garrison. When you first enter through the South Gate and walk past the East and West Souk, it would be <clears throat> really a normal urge once you come into this area to go down the Cardio Maximus, Cardio Maximus instantly when you arrive because it is such an inviting space, architecturally, your eyes just drawn there. But resist the urge to do what normal people would do. And what you need to do is go up onto that hill to the Temple of Zeus. Once you've had your photos taken up there of this amazing space, walk across the top of the hill over here. And genuinely, it's not a hill. It is sand and earth that has laid over the centuries to cover other parts of Jerash that just have not been excavated. Walk across the top of that hill and then you'll see on the other side the Temple of Artemis. Once you've reached the Temple of Artemis and explored the floating columns, majestic space, absolutely fabulous. Then you make your way down the stairs, down onto the Cardio Maximus, then explore the fabulous um, architecture, the nymphonium, the water drainage system that you can see where there are circles in the stone. You lift that, if you were to lift that up, you could see that underneath is the water drainage. This area would have serviced a population of about 25,000 people. So there was a water supply, there's cisterns, the nymphonium was delivering water continually down to the people. So my top tips when you come to Jerash is resist the urge to go down to Cardo Maximus instantly. Go explore the Temple of Zeus, walk across the top, across to the churches, get to the Temple of Artemis, and then come down. Best way to spend your day here at Jerash. Just following that lady in blue and the guy in the blue shirt, making the rookie mistake of going straight down into the Cardio Maximus. 
On the other side of that wall is the Hippodrome. Then you've come through the south gate, walked past the little souks. This is the garrison area, looking up to the Temple of Artemis and the South Theatre. Going across the hill, you have the churches, over to the Temple of Artemis, down the stairs to Cardo Maximus. The 33 rows of this amphitheatre were started in 90 AD and holds about 3,000 people. It is said that the bagpipes originated from the time during the British Protectorate. But actually the bagpipe is a much older instrument made out of sheep and goat intestine. Interesting. After traversing the hill, you go to the churches, which is just over there. That's uh, Cosmos and Damios. And um, there's another couple of churches just in this space over here. Then you've got the Temple of Artemis. Then you go down all of those stairs where that ridge is and then you hit the cardio cardo and there's a large group of rocks somewhere about here and that is the nymphonium then you can also see in this vision a street running here that intersects with the cardo and that is, I'm going to get it wrong, Tetratakon, T-E-T-A-R-K-I-O-N-I-O-N. And that is the Junction Street. And that junction is about there. So the whole of the Cardo from top to bottom, from north to south, is 800 metres. And you can see in the pavements in the Cardo, um, the wheel marks. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. And then down by the south gate, you have the oval. You have the temple of Zeus and the south theatre next door to the garrison. From this point on, it's just going to be photos because I had another one of those glitch days where the phone overheated and uh, stopped working. So these are photos of different parts of Jarash and I will put um, signs over it to explain which section that it is. The Temple of Artemis has those amazing floating columns and if you're lucky enough one of the people there will demonstrate to you by putting a spoon uh, between two of the rocks and you will see that spoon oscillating up and down. This next vision is the reason why I suggest about coming up over the top via the churches instead of going up down the cardo and then walking up all of these stairs past the sacred precinct and the stairs eight groups of about eight steps or something of that nature so this is why i say go across the top to the churches and then come down these stairs instead of going up these stairs then we come into some vision of the cardo looking to the north and then some vision of the cardo looking towards the south it's important in antiquities not just to look at the larger elements of structure but look at the small details such as the architecture of this second floor in this area and also the structure of the arches and the masonry that would have been needed to build such a wonderful structure. It's important to look at the small pieces of architecture, such as the stairs going from the street level up to the shops, and there would need to be lighting in a niche like this. 
looking at the magnificent structure of the nymphaeum, you have to realize that water was essential for life and water was not uh, available further out in the town. So people had to come to this central area for their water supply. And there would have also been a water delivery system at the Tetrapylon as well. If you want to buy a souvenir, there are some vendors with stalls throughout the site. And of course, there is the souk at the beginning of the Jirash visit. Everybody should get an opportunity to come and visit an amazing space like Jirash. And when you look at this roadway, for example, you can actually see the wheel ruts of the ancient carts that would have passed this way. It is just a wonderful space. Coming up into the junction area of the Tetrapylon, you can... See how the majesty of this space would have been quite overwhelming to people. The accuracy of the Roman roads and the Roman construction is really quite an amazing sight to see. And as I say, in this tetrapylon area, there would also be some water because if you got to this junction, you might want to drink um, because you've been on a very thirsty long journey. And coming into the Cardo again, you can see um, the circle there at the front of that photo, and that is part of the water drainage system for water collection or water drainage. And then also when you are thinking of how do people cross a street, there is also slightly raised stones where people could cross over the road without having to walk in the manure or the water that may be laying there. I hope everybody has an opportunity one day to come and visit the amazing Roman city of Jerash in Jordan. If you like what you see, like and subscribe to this Exploring Jordan with Jules or my other channel, Jules Cruise Companion. Stay safe, everybody, and happy travels.